I can honestly say things are not the same without you. It's it's a it's a it's a joy that y'all are part of our life. Mm-hmm. <coughs> um, this week's creation moment. How many of you have a fingerprint? <laughs> we all. Have it. All of us. How many of you? How many of you have worked so hard before with your hands that you wore your fingerprint off? Mm-hmm. I have. I have. We had 10 acres of okra to pick. And if you've ever picked okra, you know it ain't fun. And we tried everything. We put long sleeves on. We put plastic kitchen gloves on. We did all kinds of stuff to keep from itching. Since then, they come up with this Clemson spineless okra, which is great because it doesn't itch. And why they didn't have it back then, I don't know. <laughs> but we didn't have that. We had the itching kind. Yeah. How many of you know what I'm talking about? I do. Okra itching. Yeah. We had 10 acres. We would pick all day, and then we would have a day off. Then we would pick all day again. Yeah. And then we had a day off. Now on that day off, we picked other stuff. But we had a day off <laughs> from okra. And I'm, I promise you, we had no fingerprint. Mm. We picked so much okra, it wore it off. I've done concrete before, where that you're just constantly grabbing blocks yeah. and moving them, sliding your hands across it, and wore the fingerprint off. Mm-hmm. To the point that if you were to take a fingerprint test, it would look like you had no fingerprint. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> criminals who have been linked to a crime through their fingerprints may not be happy that they were born with a unique pattern of wrinkles on their fingertips. But we can all be glad that God gave us fingerprints because they greatly improve our sense of touch. Mm. Scientists in France performed a series of experiments with artificial fingertips made of rubber-like sensors. Then they compared the sensitivity between these grooved artificial fingertips and a smooth skin-like material to see if the grooved fingertips made a difference in the sense of touch. What they discovered surprised them. The grooved fingertips produced vibrations up to 100 times stronger than the smooth material when sliding against a slightly rough surface. The researchers concluded that these increased vibrations provide us with a greater ability to detect textures. When rubbing your fingers across a textured surface, your fingerprints amplify vibrations that stimulate the nerve endings in your skin. This then allows us to identify objects by touch. Knowing that we need our sense of touch to work from every direction, our Creator designed our fingerprints to appear in elliptical swirls. This loop designs this loop design ensures that some ridges are always brushing perpendicular to a surface mm-hmm. no matter the orientation of our fingertips. Amen. Such research may help scientists design prosthetic hands with enhanced tactical feedback. When science copies designs found in living things, it is copying the designs from their Creator, Amen. whether they recognize that fact or not. Mm, good. It's interesting what our, our fingertips provide, isn't it? <laughs> Psalms 101. Turn to Psalms 101. <clears throat> We're going to talk about a growing pandemic. And it's not Rona. This one is called screen time. Mm. Screen time is a growing pandemic. Have you ever been surfing through the internet or social media for quite a long time only to re- realize that you have been there longer than you should have? Yeah. Yeah. Whether it be on your phone or your computer or your yeah. your your uh uh, uh your iPad or whatever. It happens, doesn't it? So I got a question. What does God think about that? How does it 
affect my relationship mm. with people. This is important. Yeah. <clears throat> and by the way, teenagers are not the only ones affected Amen. by this. Psalms 101, let's look at verses 2 and 3. King David said this, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. O when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside, it shall not cleave to me. Let's pray. Father, I thank You for Your love. I thank You for Your your precepts, Your guidance that You give us in Your Word. And I pray that You would help us to have a deeper, growing hunger for it. Father, I pray especially that You would speak through me the words that You want Your people to hear tonight. Lord, help me only to say what I should. Then, Lord, I pray that You would help us to take to heart what Your Word is teaching us. And I thank You for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you shuddered when I said screen time Mm -hmm. or not. Um, I don't know if you have a um, resistance to the idea of even talking about it, but it is a growing pandemic. Yeah. And I think that if you've looked into it just a little bit at all, mm-hmm. you know you know that that's the case. Amen. But it's something that we don't want to talk about much, isn't it? Yeah. We don't want to talk about it because we, me, Bruce Scott, we are affected by it. King David didn't have TV. He didn't have a cell phone. He didn't have a tablet. Well, he did have a tablet, but it was stone. Um, But he didn't have a computer. But even in his day, there were things that he knew he ought not to be looking at. That's why why he said, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Mm -hmm. Today, I think that most people would agree that even just watching... TV, especially for long periods of time, on a regular basis, can cause problems. Right. Right? Yeah. In fact, I want some feedback here. What kind of problems does that cause? Watching TV for an extended amount of time on a regular basis, what kind of problems can that cause? Lust of the eyes. Lust of the eyes? Fear. Lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. Doubt. Ma'am? Doubt. Doubt. Yeah. Confusion. Confusion. Oh. Consumes your thinking. Oh, consumes your mind. Oh, my goodness. Diverting your time from where it should be. Diverting your time. Satan's one of his favorite tools is distraction. Mm. What else? Brainwash? Yeah. <laughs> what can it do physically? Mm. It affects your mental health, your physical health. Stress. It causes laziness. It can cause laziness. It can cause our already problem of laziness to get worse. Mm. <laughs> <clears throat> it does all of these things and more. Joint stiffness. My goodness. Yes, ma'am. Which is caught in a stupor. Mm. It can become an addiction. It is addicting. Yeah. I mean, I got to watch that favorite program. <laughs> I've got to. Yeah. I know what you mean. Right? <clears throat> <clears throat> it can also cause um, neglect of personal devotion time with our Savior. Yeah. <laughs> now. <clears throat> I'm going to say it because you probably don't want to, but TV is more interesting than reading your Bible. Mm. Your phone and all the things you can look at on it is more interesting 
It ought not to be. Right. But it is. That's why so many people, and I'm talking about Christians, I'm not talking about non Christians, I'm talking mm. about Christians. Mm. So many Christian people go to their phone and spend more time there than anywhere else. Mm. Or their computer, or their tablet. <clears throat> David said in verse 2, he said, I will behave myself wisely. Mm. Shouldn't we as well? Yes. <clears throat> he also said, under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. It's almost like he was fast forwarding into our day, right. saw what we were doing, right. and said that. Right. I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Mm. <clears throat> So i got a question. In light of the physical issues that it can cause, relationship issues that it can cause and does cause, and other problems that extensive TV watching has caused us, is it wise to continue spending the same amount of time in front of it? Yeah. No. This, this is a call to action right here. Yeah. We all agree it's not wise but we're going to go home and do it anyway. Mm. <clears throat> what about social media? I realize I'm meddling now. There's not much social about it, mm. really. Yeah. Secular studies have proven that it has caused a communication breakdown and a communication inability for people to be able to communicate in a group setting or in public. All you have to do is just go somewhere. And you say, good morning, and they go... <laughs> and they run off somewhere as though you've just shot them with something. Or you say, how are you doing? And they go, um... Okay. It's almost like we're not supposed to be talking here. Mm. I was at the chiropractor the other day and I was sitting down in the little waiting area and there was a woman already sitting there and I sat down I was kind of humming. I don't even realize, I didn't realize what I was humming. And I know that because she asked me. She said, what are you humming? I said, um... And I thought I had to think about it for a little bit. I said, and I told her what I was home. I said, it's a hymn out of the hymn book. And we actually talked and had a little conversation there. That's rare yeah. nowadays. Yeah. Most of the time, when you're in public and you're waiting for something or somewhere, whatever, you know what you're doing and everybody else is doing? Looking at the phone. Looking at the phone. By the way, it's poor posture. Think about what that's doing right here. It's poor posture. All right? <clears throat> right. I'm going to give you some statistics that I looked up. How social media affects us. Above 90% of people ages 16 to 24 use the Internet for social media only. That's it. People using social media compared to people who don't are more depressed. People find social media effects more addictive than the use of tobacco and alcohol. Wow. If it is addictive... <clears throat> We should never look down on the guy out there that's mm. smoking a cigarette because right. Right. he won't quit smoking a cigarette. Mm. He knows he shouldn't. It's just so hard to quit it. Mm. You say, Brother Bruce, I'm not addicted to social media. Really? Mm. Then don't look at it between now and next Sunday and let's see how that goes. 
if you really don't think that you're addicted to it, don't look at it for a week. Just a suggestion. Social media... Oh, by the way, most of the users of social media are also suffering from increased anxiety, depression, and poor sleeping conditions like insomnia. Social media greatly reduces real communication among family members. Could he use social... Do you think Satan has something to do with this? Yes. Brother Tommy made a a comment this morning. He said, I don't know why it is, but some of the people that we are rude to the most are the people that we live with. Those people that we claim to love more than anybody else are the people that we feel the most comfortable saying rude things to. Why is that? Because the family is Satan's favorite goal to disrupt and destroy the family. If he can destroy the family, he has destroyed the church. If he has destroyed the church, he's destroyed the country. Amen. The the church is only as strong as the families are in it. Right. So he works hard at destroying the family unit. One of the reasons he does that is because God made the family unit. Mm-hmm. And anything that God makes, Satan wants to destroy. Amen. Satan does not like unity and harmony. People getting along, loving each other, mm-hmm. helping each other. He don't like that. So he's going to do everything he can to disrupt it. And what better tool? Mm-hmm. You see it in the restaurants. It's not common to not see it. Two people, husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, maybe a family, a couple of children, every one of them. Mm. They're not talking to each other. Mm. They're looking at their phone. Sometimes, I'd hate to be a waitress or waiter. Sometimes the waitress and the waiter has to almost get rude to get them to look up Mm. and tell them what they want to eat. Because they're so interested in something that may not even be real. Right. Amen. Yes, I think Satan has something to do with this. <clears throat> and if he can drive a wedge between us and our family members, what do you think he can do between in our relationship between us and God? Mm-hmm. Remember, this is the screen time sometimes more often than not we find more interesting than studying our Bible. Therefore, spend more time doing it. The screen time. That is a hindrance to our walk with God. And then we wonder why we don't get along with those people that we claim to love. James 4, 7 says this. He says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil. And he'll flee from you. <clears throat> and why do I bring this up? Because if the devil is at work through our phones and our computers, our tablets and our TV, and he is, yeah. by the way, none of those things are bad in and of themselves. Mm-hmm. It's not wrong to have a cell phone. It's not wrong to be able to go on the internet. It's not wrong to have a TV. Especially if you don't turn it on. <laughs> it, they're not wrong. They're not bad in, in and of themselves. But it's what we allow to come across that screen that can become bad. It's how much time we spend in front of it that can turn to sin. <clears throat> That's why we bring this up. Submit yourselves therefore to God resist the devil and he'll flee from you resist means to exert force in opposition Mm. this is not a passive neglect of Satan's efforts but more of a decisive proactive effort to gain control of the situation Mm. resist doesn't mean 
stand firm, close your eyes and hope it end and go away. That's not what resist means. That means ball up the fist and hit him back. Exert strong... I'm not talking about your husband. I'm talking about Satan here. Okay? Satan is the one we're trying to resist. Alright? <clears throat> so, if Satan is using social media, TV, phone, games <clears throat> to divert our attention away from that which is good, and he is, <clears throat> then how do we resist this? <clears throat> Set some boundaries. Set yourself some boundaries. God did. Remember what David said? I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. He had a boundary. His boundary was nothing. I was listening to some Christians talk the other day and they said, have you watched that movie? So and so and so and so. I said, yeah. But I had to watch it on mute the whole time. Mm. Why? It's because I didn't want to hear all that cussing. Oh, there wasn't much cussing. How much is a sin? Mm. One cuss word or only ten? Mm. Or only once every twenty sentences instead of once every two sentences? What's David said, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. Set yourself some boundaries. <clears throat> All screen time isn't bad in and of itself, but some of it is. Yes. And it can be. <clears throat> Number one, I'm going to give you some ideas on what you can do to try to reduce the amount of screen time. By the way, did you know that the blue light emitted by the screen, whether it be a phone or whether it be a tablet or TV or computer, is harmful to the eyes and the brain. How many of you knew that? It's a fact. It's been scientifically proven. So the more time we spend in front of it, and and for those of you that work with a computer, which is becoming more and more needful nowadays, yeah. um, they make some glasses that reflect that blue light. Uh, you might look at getting some of those. Yeah. It might help with that problem. But it is a problem. Okay. But here are some ideas on things that you can do to set some boundaries. Okay. Number one, decide right now that you're not going to purposely allow sinful images or language to be part of your screen time. Now this person that I was talking with, their opinion was as long as it wasn't cuss words every third word, then it was okay to listen to. My opinion is if it's any cussing on it, turn it off. And don't watch it again. You knew it was there. Hypocrisy is complaining about the nudity and the violence and the foul language that you put on your DVD machine. Mm. We do it on purpose. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's only rated this, that, or the other. I don't even know what they're rated nowadays. P, PG, or... The only bad ones are the X-rated, right? No! R-rated? I think they're bad. PG? I think they're bad. By the way... Some of them are not even rated because they don't have any cussing and they don't have any of this, they don't have any of that. But the content is unbiblical. So it may not have any of those real bad things on them, but I mean, even Michael Landon had extra long hair on Little House on the Prairie and didn't go to church. Right? Right? And that was one of the most helpful... He, he went sometimes, but a lot of times he stayed home. Michael Landa did. Well, the wife and the children went. <clears throat> I mean, even on these 
1960s and 70s movies that were the wholesome ones, yeah. you can still recognize some issues there that were unbiblical. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it ought to be more clear. Yes. So decide right now that you're not going to allow on purpose sinful images or whatever to come across your screen. Number two, put your phone away and turn off the TV during meal times. I went to eat this afternoon with Tommy and Brenda and their family. And they may have had their phones with them in their pocket. I don't know. But we didn't look at them. We were just talking to each other. Yeah. And in fact, there were times when Everybody was talking at the same time. I didn't know who to listen to. <laughs> but I'd rather have that than silence because everybody's looking at their phone and trying to get a little bit of food in every once in a while. <clears throat> Put your phone down, not just down here, but into another room, and turn the TV off and have some family time. Amen. If that's awkward, you're in trouble. Mm. That's good. <clears throat> Some people aren't willing to part with their phone ever. I mean, within phone uh, arm distance from it. If if it gets farther away than arm's distance, a, t- a catastrophe has struck, and we've got to do something mm. now. <laughs> if that's where you are. You're in trouble. Yeah. Could this be called an addiction? Yeah. <clears throat> Social media, by the way, is addictive. Mm. Number three, regulate how much of your time that you spend on screen time. Have you, have you ever have you ever counted, added up the amount of time that you spent on screen time? Mm whether it be your TV watching, do that. Do that. I would, I, I'm almost willing to give you 50 bucks if you'll come back next Sunday and tell me how much time you spent daily. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> but for your sakes, do it. Figure it out. It might surprise you how much time you spend... <clears throat> in front of that screen, whether it be your phone, your tablet, your TV, computer, whatever. But regulate that time. Mm -hmm. Tell yourself, you know what, I'm just going to sit it down and go outside and pick up pine cones. Number four, neglect the use of screen time at least one hour before going to bed. It's been scientifically proven that screen time greatly disturbs healthy sleep habits. Mm. You having trouble sleeping at night? Maybe it's because you go to sleep with your phone in your hand. At least an hour before going to bed, put it away. Mm. Just put it away. <clears throat> Number five, Substitute an evening TV show for a board game with your husband or wife or children. (coughs) Or go outside for a walk or throw the ball. Exercise is far better than gelling on the couch. By the way, if that's awkward for you, you're in trouble. Mm That show can go on without you. Amen. But your family cannot. Mm, Good. Again, I'm not saying that all screen time is bad because it's not. It's what we do with it. What I am saying is that Satan can and does use it to cause us to sin. Mm. And sadly... We are. Most likely, every single one of us in this room. Whether it be our TV, our phone, our tablet, or whatever. 
Food is good and even vital to consume. But too much is a detriment. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way with screen time. we got to have it. we got to have it. You've got to be able to do what you do to make a living or whatever. So you got to have it. By the way, <clears throat> I've got... I've got the uh, King James Version Bible app on my phone, and I can read it anywhere I go if I choose to. But I want to read this one right here when I'm in church or if I'm at home. Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you why. <clears throat> well, for, for one thing, it doesn't throw any blue light at me, okay? Amen. But, but mainly, I don't have these things popping up on it that ain't good to look at. Number two, I don't have a distraction and a temptation to check the weather, check an email, or check this, or who just texted me right. when, I'm sh when I should be devoting. Isn't that the name of a, the, our time spent yeah. with God anyway? Right. Devotion. Mm. What are we devoted to? We don't need to be checking emails or checking text messages or the weather or whatever. Right in the middle of studying the Word of God, put that away and open up your paper Bible mm. and use it. Amen. I promise you, you'll get more out of it. Yes. <clears throat> so, let's do our best to glorify God at all times by being a good steward of the time that He's given us and not squander it in front of a screen. It causes problems. In fact, every husband that I've spoken with that was having marital issues, this subject came up. This subject came up. It is a problem. Yeah. It's a problem in families that are doing well. Mm. Amen. It's a problem in every one of our relationships <laughs> with God. <clears throat> so our call to action is make some changes about it starting immediately. Mm. By the way, you can leave your phone in the car when you come into church. You won't have to look at it or you won't get to look at it however yeah. you want to look at it. Amen. But it might help you pay attention in church a little bit better. <clears throat> so let's be careful. Let's pray. Father, I love you and I thank you for giving us your word. And I thank you for giving us direction on how that we can draw closer to you. Lord, please help us to do that. Help us to exercise self-discipline to stay away from things that are causing us problems especially in this area of screen time. And I thank you for that. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Let's stand and turn to page 258.